<laughs> hey, Paulette. Are you there? Hey. How you doing? I'm great. Can you see me? I can't see you. I, I, I just see like a little uh, icon or something. All right. Hold on a second. Let me get my technical dude in here. Husband. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Craig, can you come here a sec? So we don't have um, video. What do you think? This is Peter, by the way. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm well. <laughs> All right, now I see little Peter, and now he's bigger. <laughs> oh, how about start, wait. Yeah, that might work. Okay. Uh-oh. Hey! hey! I see you. Uh, there, now I'm using my daughter's um, music stand, so I'm gonna move it. Okay. And tell the dog to move. <clears throat> With some BB King. Oh, you got a nice around. view of the BB yeah, <laughs> got that. This is my husband's studio, so we've oh, got nice. some good, um, drum stuff and some uh -oh. other stuff. Cool. Some busy. Right. Very nice. Thank right. you. So, uh, All right. it's been a while. Yeah, you know what? Okay, so where do I look? Because right now I'm looking over here. Uh, I just look at you. Am I looking at you? I, it looks like, uh, um, so I, it looks like you're looking at the screen. I think the, uh, the, the camera's probably at the top of the computer. Um, so that, <laughs> I just look at the screen cause that, that's okay. I see you. That's so that's what I'm comfortable with. So yeah. Okay. I actually want this to go away so that I'm not looking at myself because then I'll be <laughs> preoccupied. <laughs> yeah there you can still see me now yeah yeah it's been a while you let me know because i'm moving this around but i see you just fine okay i'm i'm cool i see you fine all right so yeah, ever. Been, i don't want i don't want to uh, blow up our spot that much but uh it's been it's been over a decade it's it's been oh over gosh. kind of uh Oh wow! <laughs> that means that we're old. I know, I know. But it's but it's better than the alternative. It's better than. That's what my dad always says. That's what my yeah. dad always says. So, yeah. Um, I'm I'm just trying to think. It's probably a uh, high school graduation uh, that we most recently see each other. Right, and you want to know? I mean, honestly, like our school's so big, I cannot. Yeah. I don't have a lot of memories of you and I. Sure. You know hallways or anything yeah. or classes but you know anyone who loves heights and and the neighborhood is, is a friend of mine so i'm glad we were able to Excellent. connect cool well I'll, actually i'll share you uh one memory that i have uh, uh, my and, and uh my experience at heights is actually i find something uh comparatively uh typical for for uh mixed people yeah. um, which is kind of just like um um navigating negotiating uh the boundaries and so right. uh there were there are a lot of clicks at heights and yeah. i'm safe from belonging to any of the clicks i yeah. I, I i'm cool with a lot of the clicks but mm -hmm. in terms of like going to the parties and things like that i was yeah. kind of like a, a social loner in that in that respect right but right. you and i actually uh, meet uh freshman year uh in the ib program i think we have some ib courses together yeah. and okay. um I actually remember, uh, so uh, I come from, uh, my, my, uh, my first year at Heights, um, I come from a background and going to a very small private school. So okay. uh, that, that freshman year at Heights is my first year mm -hmm. uh, at a public school. And, and I mean, my graduating class in eighth grade was 13 kids. Oh, wow. Uh, so going that, from that to 3,500, right. uh, a little bit of, bit of a change. Yeah. Uh, and so... Um, that first day of school, we have some classes together. Um, right. and then, um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're both, we were walking on Cedar, uh, home. And, uh, and then, so we kind of saw each other and said, Hey, we'll, we'll walk together. And so we had a nice little conversation and I thought, I mean, just, I mean, obviously you, you, you probably don't remember that, uh, but it stands out in my memory. Oh. And I just remember of, of having a friendly person. Yeah. Uh, who who has 
a, a similar background to myself. Um, um, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe high school won't be that bad. And so Aww. it's like little, little things like that, that kind of, uh, bolster, bolster the, um, the experience and, and the, the confidence and, and, um, uh, the, the strength to kind of endure the challenges. And so, yeah. um, we, I don't, I, I mean, I, I drop out of the, the IB program after a couple of years. Uh, I don't know if you remember the, like the, the protests and things like that. Yes. So yes. That, that had an effect on me. Yes. Um, so I drop out of the IB program. Um, and so I'm, we, we abstain from interacting that much afterwards, but I think, you know, the, the, um, when high school graduation comes around, everybody's like reminiscing and everybody's all best of friends on that day right. and everything. So okay. I think that was the most recent occasion that we talked. We did, we, yeah. Uh, and then a few years ago, just connecting on Facebook and, and interacting accordingly. So. Wow. Well, I'm glad you remember that. I have the worst memory. Uh -huh. I don't, I, yeah. I, you know, I, I, um, I don't know what it is about my makeup, but I just, you know, you're asking me what were, what happened freshman year that stands out. I don't know. Sure. And there are a couple of things that I can say from my high school experience that were really uh, resonate with me. But other than that, it was all a blur and <laughs> so much more of my life. And it's not because sure, of, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know, but, yeah. but I'm glad we're here. So, so uh, just to catch up a little bit, what, yeah. what, what, what's, what's been going on in your life since graduation? Oh, like so. Fast forward a, a recount. Yeah. So, um, since graduation, um, I, I went to, uh, Eastern Michigan University. Okay. You moved. Um, I moved, I got out. Okay. Uh, but I, my senior year of high school, I was, um, having a uh, long distance relationship with the man who's now my husband ah, nice. um, back when we didn't have instant chat, right. but we had bulletin boards. Okay. Um, and so Craig and I met talking about music. Okay. And so I went to Eastern Michigan. I lasted about a month and a half and then I had to be with this man <laughs> who, who happened to live in Oklahoma. Okay. So I dropped out of college. Oh wow. Um, moved to Oklahoma. Then called my mom and dad and told them that I had <laughs> I had left um, Ohio and Michigan uh -huh. and um, started my life there. We got married in 1994. Okay. Um, lived in Oklahoma City at the time of the bombing, oh, um, wow. and so that was a, a huge um, impact on my life. Um, yeah. That actually a uh, nursing um, and nursing program and. Um, at that point, really felt like I couldn't continue. Oh man! It was just really, um, it, it was an experience. Okay. Um, my husband was in graduate school, mm -hmm. and um, we ended up moving to Cincinnati so he could get his PhD at UC. Okay. So I ended back up in uh, Ohio, and then from there it was um, looking for universities for him to teach, and there were two offers one was in texas and one was in mississippi ah now <laughs> craig is as white as the driven snow and here i am this um, multiracial woman and my mom grew up in mississippi wow. and uh, she basically said she would never come back to see us if we moved to mississippi okay and um, that was not something i was not that interested in going to mississippi sure so we ended up in West Texas, and that's where we are now. We've been here 15 years. Okay. Um, we have a 13-year-old daughter. Oh, nice. And uh, I've worked in nonprofit since uh, I graduated college in 2002. Okay. Um, and I am the prevention director of an alcohol and drug abuse council. Okay. So. Cool. That's a, that's all of it in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Very nice. Um, um, so just to give you a little bit of background on, on, on what I've been doing. So I go to undergrad uh, in Virginia, uh, studying economics, go to business school here in the, in the Cuyahoga area at Case. Uh, okay. And yeah, and uh, I work at uh, Amnesty International for a little bit, uh, doing human rights work. And I go to law school after that. Uh, graduate law school, protest the law. Uh, right. The U.S. Constitution. Yes. <laughs> um, and and uh, receive some blowback from that. Mm -hmm. Um, but kind of actually, uh, begin like a spiritual journey. And so, mm -hmm. um, I, I figured that I didn't want to wail against the machine for the rest of my life. 
Right. Um, and, and if the American law was insufficient for me to follow and abide, then what do I actually believe in? Uh, right. and, and I kind of grew up, my, my parents raised my brother and sister and I to be uh, rather secular and, and, and agnostic. And so I knew a little bit about religions, but not that much. So uh, I figured, well, I might as well study something, uh, some type of law or creed or, or doctrine or something. So I actually started studying the religions that I'm familiar with. And uh, uh, that kind of uh, progresses me along um, a spiritual journey, as I mentioned, and um, to the point where I, I consider myself a mystic. Uh, believing in truth in, in all traditions and loving everybody. Uh, and I get involved in the interfaith movement. And so um, I'm, I'm a, an interfaith activist building peace and understanding and cooperation between different religious communities. Um, and I also get involved in the mixed ethnicity movement as well okay. um, and advocating the mixed experience and, and um, uh, building uh, dialogue and support um, and, and, and help for, for, uh, for people who are mixed and, and, and want to find solutions and, and um, uh, coping skills and tools uh, to, to be affirmative and in, in identif identifying in that manner uh, mm -hmm. and embracing all one's heritages um, uh, amidst the, the tendencies of society to kind of to kind of pigeonhole people. So, um, so that's, that's basically what I do. Um, and a lot, it, it involves like conferences and, and doing a lot of study um, and research, um, and a lot of communication and dialogue and things like that. Uh, I try to focus on, um, cha transforming systems and institutions, but that's a whole nother story. So, but that's, that's what I do. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little radical in many ways, but, uh, okay. <laughs> very, very, very congenial and, and, and benevolent as well. Uh, so that's what I do. Um, and so this project of the, the mixed spirit, uh, project, uh, is basically uh, a matter of just um, talking with friends uh, who are mixed. And um, one thing I find like in the, uh, in the, in the interfaith community is that it's always, it's, it's very often, um, like I said before, like pigeonholing, like uh, this person is X and this person is Y, this person is Z, and then engaging each other accordingly. But each person has a, a, a fixed box to fit it. Uh, and so uh, it, there's a very strong uh, aversion towards blending of those boxes. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of the culture I observe in the interfaith realm. Uh, and then in the mixed realm, religion is kind of like the elephant in the room. There's a lot of experience of spirituality and people coming from different uh, religious traditions. And so it's there, but uh, it's the, 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 the discourse is, is set within a very strong secular context where religion and spirituality are kind of absent. And so uh, when we talk about issues of identity and belonging and acceptance, mm -hmm. uh, I find that it's very important to include that element of, of religion and spirituality as a form of understanding oneself and, and, and having the tools to kind of be uh, affirmative and, and, and um, uh, confirming or, or, or uh, again, affirming one's identity and, and belonging and additionally, uh, particular, well, I'll leave it at that. So this project is kind of like bringing those two elements together, um, and, and, and just sharing experience. And so, um, so there are five basic questions that I have, okay. um, and, uh, I've learned to, to kind of stick with, with the, with the script a little bit. Right. So, uh, there may be a, some occasions where I, I ask a follow up question, sure. but whenever you want, want to move to the next one, we can just, we can just go ahead, uh, and, and carry on. Well, and, and how uh, fitting to do this on our observance of Martin Luther King. Yeah, yeah. So I, I appreciate that, and uh, thank you for your work. I mean, that's amazing. Thanks. Um, and for including me. So yes. thank you. Definitely, definitely. I yeah. appreciate that. I lift um, my um, I lift my Starbucks to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have my my Kauai. Ooh, Kauai nice. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but yeah, well, I, I appreciate your, your comments, uh, periodically on Facebook and the, the little, the little, um, affirmations and, 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 oh, support, uh, and everything else like that. So, uh, uh, it, it, it mean, like, I mean, like that little walk on, on first day of freshman year yeah, little yeah. Things can mean a lot. So I appreciate that. Thank uh, you. I'm fasting this month from Facebook posting, <laughs> but, okay. um, yeah, I had to get that in check a little bit, but I'll be back. I know in what February. that's like. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. 
that can be healthy though. Yes. I actually, I spent like two years away from Facebook. Uh, I remember, yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> Where's Peter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, so are we ready? I'm ready. All right, cool. So the first question is kind of like in two parts. Okay. Um, it's basically, um, what is the ethnic and spiritual background of your father and what is the ethnic and spiritual background of your mother? Okay. Um, ethnic and spiritual background of my father. Well, my, um, my father was raised Methodist. Okay. Um, up north um, in the um, Pennsylvania, New York area. And um, that, I, from what I gather, um, you know, has really uh, formed his, his life um, and his foundation. Mm -hmm. um, my dad is a white guy. <laughs> um, he is, um, the background is Welsh okay. um, and English. Um, but he is kind of your your every guy sure um he's um i never got the impression that his ethnicity other than being white was of consequence to him okay um and so he if i were to ask him he would say i'm, I'm white okay um, yeah my mom my mom is African American and uh, black is fine, um, and um, also Native American, Mississippi Choctaw. Okay. Um, and her upbringing, her religious, spiritual upbringing, was Southern Baptist in church from dusk till dawn, sure. dawn till dusk, whichever. <laughs> um, <Sometimes> cool. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And. Um, I think that took up a lot of time. I think it was um, um, something that was just so ingrained, mm -hmm. but I'm not really sure if she would consider that her belief system more than just something that they did. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, so one follow-up question um, is, is kind of like the taboo question in, in the, the mixed ethnicity scene. Uh, but it but it provides some some insight and and um, um, understanding. So the question is: uh, so given the the different backgrounds of your parents, how do your parents meet? Oh wow! So my mom, my my parents got married in 1969. So okay. Summer of Love. So that kind of gives you the political um, background. Uh -huh. of what was going on? Sure. Mom was born and raised in Mississippi. Um, dad was born in New Jersey, uh, raised in the Pennsylvania area, and he was as white as he is, as white as white can get, um, beyond my husband. Um, <laughs> and I mean, like my dad was literally raised in a log cabin that his father built. Wow. Um, so you've got these very different lifestyles, but I think that my father's spiritual um, and religious upbringing in the Methodist faith um, and tradition was very social activist sure. um, based. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, Mississippi's not for me. Okay. I'm out. And so she left to move in with a sister who lived in Rochester, New York. Ah. And my father left home and before he joined the Peace Corps, um, he went to Rochester, New York, mm -hmm. and he worked in a settlement house okay. um, back in the day when that was, um, you know, kind of the norm in communities to have this place where, you know, youth can come together. My okay. dad was the white guy there, and my mom was there, and the rest is history. So that's how they met. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. And, uh, and then after they got married, they hot footed it to California, uh -huh. um, in a VW bug. And, um, and that's where I was born in San Diego. Okay. Yeah. So I think, um, it's, it's, it's often a very fascinating story to hear how these two worlds mm -hmm. come together. Um, or multiple worlds or whatever, right. however you want to, how, how you want to uh, categorize that. Uh, and so 
um, I think it, it's helpful to 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 witness that, to, to see it, and to hear it, um, and 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 uh, to strengthen that connection. And so mm -hmm. I appreciate you sharing that. So it's, oh, you're welcome. It's a fun story. Yeah. Uh, so uh, ready for question two? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So um, given given uh, the background of your parents, uh, mm -hmm. your mother coming from the deep south, right, um, and kind of. Um, progressing out of that that environment, uh, and your father coming from uh, this experience of of Christian inspired social mm -hmm. activism and right. and social justice. Um, what do your parents teach you as a child growing up? What are some of the the lessons that stand out in your memory um, regarding what your parents in, uh, instill mm -hmm. in you as a child? Yeah. Um, I think. I would say independence is a huge thing for my parents to leave their um, individual places where they were raised to come together and then move to the West Coast um, was a huge sign of independence for them. And then to be an interracial couple at that, yeah. um, I think that the foundation is is independence that they've instilled so much so that you know we moved a lot of places we were very um oh i i wouldn't say cloistered but we were we had to be our own um support we didn't have a lot of extra family support some of that was because of race issues mm -hmm. some of that was just because my parents left what was expected okay. um so, you know, it's funny you ask me that. Um, my father, my dad, you know, there's there's Pooh and there's Eeyore, right? Okay. In the Winnie the Pooh series. Okay. And Pooh is this, you know, positive person and Eeyore is kind of the opposite. Sure. My dad is Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so my dad um, always taught me to have a healthy skepticism Okay. Of people so much so that he would say that people's um, drive is to get one over on you. Sure. Um, you've got to take care of yourself, watch out for yourself. Mm. Um, my mother has a lot of that too, okay. um, but in some ways she was much more social. Okay. So I had both of those type things going. Um, you know, they always raised us to be honest and to um, to be thinkers. Uh -huh. So independent thinkers with a healthy skepticism. Sure. And um, you know, awareness. Wow. Yeah. That's I mean that's fascinating. And so uh, as you as you as you mentioned that I, I try I, I like my wheels start turning and yeah. uh, I'm trying to think of. Uh, I mean, I, I I know I can I can evidence that same type of culture uh, w amongst my parents as well. Um, I think I, I, it's something it, it's a little bit deep, uh, and so I, I think I might have to process that a little bit yeah. before I can kind of articulate it and 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 tangibly evidence it. Um, but uh, that's very interesting uh, because I think it takes a type of uh, propensity for critical thinking mm -hmm. for somebody to kind of like you said. Um, to kind of go beyond what's expected or one's realm of familiarity mm -hmm. and, and, and be married and involved with a person from another community. Uh, right. And kind of, it's, it's kind of like going beyond the, bu the protective bubble of one's own community and kind of going to, to, a, to another uncharted realm. Um, right. And it takes a certain uh, courage and intellect, independence, as you mentioned, um, but also, like you, like you say, like that, that, that skepticism or, or that critical thinking about one's, one's own community as well and saying, I'm, I'm, not, I'm uncertain about some of these, these tendencies or often within a community there tend to be like certain um, self-protective uh, um, um, doctrines or ideologies or something like that regarding the other people outside yeah. of the community. Uh, and so, uh, so for someone to, to go outside of the community, it's, it's a matter of questioning mm -hmm. that, that culture or, or that ideology. And so 
Uh, yeah, uh, there, there's a lot going on in there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, sure. it's interesting. So like I said, I, I have to process that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so uh, cool. All right. So uh, let's, let's go on to question three. Cool. Okay. All right. So uh, question three is, um, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, your parents moving outside of that, that um, realm of familiarity um, and um, the, the kind of uh, support network even, maybe not completely, but in, in a certain way, uh, going to another state, uh, getting involved with an, a person from another uh, community. Um, so there's, there's that requirement of being self-sufficient, independent, um and and so uh there's there's uh there's so there can be some challenges uh that 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 people experience in that so um that might be challenges that you experience as as a family uh together but the question is actually as i stumble along these words uh is um what challenges do you experience as a child as a youth uh either as a, individually as a as a young girl a young woman Hi. Um, or as a family as well, um, but but what given given uh, the the experiences uh, growing up, uh, at what point did you leave California and come to Ohio? Um, I was um, eight years old. Okay. And we actually moved to Chicago first. Okay. So I lived in Chicago, and my my dad was in law enforcement, um, and so we that's why we ended up in in larger cities. Okay. Uh, my parents were always very good <laughs> at finding communities that were racially mixed, so much yeah. so that my dad would stalk communities like neighborhoods uh -huh. before we would you know buy a house. Okay. Like he he did surveillance right, uh -huh. and before we went to a church. He would go one Sunday, sit in the parking lot, and see who came in and out, and huh. oh, what what shades of brown were there? It was very perspective. <laughs> but yes, to answer your question, um, by the, I we left uh, the West Coast when I was about eight years old. Okay, all yeah. right. So, so given given those those experiences, what yeah. are some of the challenges that you experience uh, as as a girl and as a young woman mm -hmm. growing up? Um. <clears throat> You know, I remember a very distinct time when we lived in Chicago, when I saw my mom and dad kiss. Mm. And I don't know what it was, because they'd kissed before, uh -huh. um, besides being totally grossed out, because I was probably <laughs> years old, 11 years sure. old. Right. I, I saw color at that moment. Okay. I was probably 10 or 11. And when I think about it, I think I had been experiencing um, at school some some challenges. You know, I was the mixed girl with the good hair. Uh. Um, so I wasn't, I felt like some of the African American girls didn't accept me. Uh. Um, but yeah, I was brown. And so some of the, the Caucasian girls I felt didn't accept me. Yeah. Um, moving is a difficult transition anyway, so yeah. there was that going on. Yeah. And really never knowing where you fit in, but I, I remember seeing mom and dad kiss, and from, from that point on, I remember being very conscious of everyone's reaction uh, to me and to them and to us together. Okay. And um, I, that carried with me for a long time. Um, some of the challenges that I had were just constantly having to explain what I was. Uh -huh. You know, you have people saying, well, what are you? Uh -huh. You know, what race are you? Yeah. I, mean, I understand now the, the dynamic of people wanting to know if you're friend or foe, and they do that by categorizing you. Um, sometimes they do that just because um, they're curious, like genuinely, honestly. Sure innocently curious yeah but it always felt like an interrogation mm. um especially the younger i was mm -hmm. the challenges that i had in cleveland were different okay and that i in high school i did have a lot of issues with um black girls mm. um there seemed to be a lot of you know, indictment on me because I was light skin. Mm. Um, I thought I was better. 
because I was smart and I was one of those kids, I thought I was better. Right. When, you know, I struggled with all the same issues as anyone else did. Yeah. Um, so those were the main ones. Um, I remember thinking about, I have a brother who's several years younger than me okay. and seeing my brother struggle um, and not understanding why he was getting in trouble all the time. And I think a lot of that was because he was seen as a black boy, mm. whereas I was seen as a light skinned you know, pretty whatever girl. Interesting. So not understanding what this whole race thing meant to yeah. everyone else. I knew what it meant to me. It just meant, you know, mom was black, dad's white. Right. But to everyone else, it seemed to mean something different. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, a lot, a lot to, to uh, kind of uh, absorb and digest with that as well. Um, and, and, uh, I'm trying to be objective and, and be the the conversation facilitator, but as you're talking, I'm I'm kind of like uh, there's some immediacy uh, in what yeah. you're saying, so yeah. I, I have to process for myself as well. Um, but so I understand your when your California experience is a little bit earlier in your life, mm -hmm. but uh, do you do you, is there? I mean, you have a unique experience of living in different. Um, regions in different right. cities um, as a child. Uh, and so uh, are there any comparisons or, or differences that you notice uh, between California and Chicago and Cleveland? Um, I, I think in California, you know, it's probably my most carefree time. Okay. Um, I don't, I think it was for my whole family. Okay. You now there were certain where, where in California is this? Um, I was born in San Diego, but then we, we ended up in the Bay Area. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So yeah. kind of all the whole spectrum. Yeah. I think the younger that I was, um, my mom had different experiences. She talks about, you know, someone thinking that she was my nanny at one point. But as, as the years went on and as I got older, there was less of that. Uh -huh. But I think to answer your question, you know, depending on where I lived, people thought I was something different. Okay. Okay. And even now living in West Texas, um, most people think that I'm Hispanic. Yeah. Yes. And then, you know, when I say I don't speak Spanish, I get looks like, how dare you not speak Spanish? Uh, Latino. So I, yeah, exactly. So I say my mom is black, you know? Um, <laughs> Um, but in Chicago, it was, I was, um, Hispanic mm -hmm. or black okay. in, in Cleveland. I don't really remember it being as big an issue, but always feeling as if I fit in more with, um, people of color, even if they didn't accept me. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Um, when we lived in Oklahoma, I was Indian. I was Native American. Uh -huh. Okay. So I've had this like ability to meld, and I I don't take it as an insult now when people assume that, you know, I'm Hispanic. But you know, um, everyone wants to fit in somewhere, and there have been times when I've had I've denied my true self in order hmm. to fit in. Okay, interesting. Ooh, that's harsh to say. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a big statement. <laughs> I can see the reverse mode coming in after you said that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did I answer the question? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was asking about the differences between in, in the different communities. Yeah. The, the context of challenges as well. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I I remember. I mean, we we both um, live in in the the Cuyahoga area of Ohio for a number of years during yeah. our high school years. And so yes. I remember, uh, I, that's where I live today, uh, still. Okay. Uh, so I remember, uh, growing up, um, it being offered or, or, or described as kind of like, um, the, 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 um, a bastion of diversity, uh, right. in, in multicultural, this multicultural, yeah. that, uh, when in actuality it was kind of like just black and white, uh, there right. wasn't that much of a spectrum there, uh, and there was a Jewish community as well, uh, and that's pretty much the the diversity. That's it. And it's like once I leave Ohio, I'm like, wow, there's a whole rainbow of colors. 
Uh, yeah. And so then I get to see, like, you, you go to New York or the East Coast or California, and you're like, wow, there's, there's a whole, there are communities of other people. Um, so I do appreciate the, the interest or the, the, um, the kind of um, affinity that many people in the Heights area have towards diversity, but I think it still has a, a long way to go. Uh, I live in the Coventry area at the moment, uh, oh. which w there's, there, there's a, a fair number of uh, people of Asian descent as well, uh, predominantly students at, at Case. Yeah. Um, so it's a little, a, a little, there's a little bit additional diversity, but it uh, still has a long way to go. Uh, I was at a, um, um, at a community meeting a few years ago and the mayor called Cleveland Heights the most diverse city in the country. And I'm like, whoa. What? <laughs> yeah. So, but it gives a little bit of an indication of kind of like the myopic uh, yes. perspective of, of being here. But um, yeah, so it's interesting that you mentioned the, 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 the black uh, girls at Heights giving you uh, some, some grief. Um, right. I think, like I said, my, for myself, um, I kind of, I think people didn't know what to expect from me. Uh, I was kind of like uh, an X factor. And so people didn't test me that much. I wasn't bullied that much. Mm -hmm. But again, I wasn't, I wasn't kind of fully embraced either. And so right. um, I, coming from a, from a different school, um, I didn't have a track record uh, in the neighborhood or whatever. Uh, and so um, as my, my brother and sister and I all, all went to public school in the same year, I mean, my brother and sister kind of become increasingly social uh, amongst the neighborhood kids and everything. Uh, and I kind of just stuck to myself and, and kind of guarded. My, my parents actually separate at, at that same period. So mm -hmm. I kind of get that responsibility of being the, the man of the house and watching out and everything else like that. So I had my mind on all these other things and, and um, partying and socializing uh, were, were less of a priority. So I kind of just, like I said, navigate the, the boundaries and, and get through high school. And by senior year, I think uh, – I build, I, I'm able to strengthen some connections and some friendships by that point. I, li, I mean, we, we, we kind of see people for four years and people yeah. have a better idea of what to expect and everything. Um, but by that point, it's like, okay, nice to know you. I'm, yeah, uh, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but all right. So anyways, continuing on. Yeah. Um, on to question four. Okay. Uh, question four is, uh, given these challenges um, mm -hmm. and given this experience that you have, um, what are some of the solutions that you find uh, as as an adult? Uh, what are some of the lessons that you learn um, and, and and to solve these challenges uh, that you that you experienced previously? Wow. Well, you know, I'm, we're raising a, a daughter who okay. is of mixed heritage, and sure. you know, i i see um, I see hope okay. in in the future. Yeah. And so that's good. And, and just to stay positive, um, I think that solutions um, come from a dialogue like you and I are having. And, mm -hmm. and I, I really feel like people are afraid to talk about race and diversity, um, especially in an area where I live now is very conservative. Mm -hmm. um, West Texas cowboy hats and oil fields and things like that. And, you know, there's not a, you would think on the surface, there's not a lot of diversity of thought, mm -hmm. but when you get to know people, we have a lot of diversity here. We're just not talking about different ideas and, and talking will lead to maybe a difference of opinion, maybe a different action. Mm. Um, I think solutions come in knowing your community. Um, this morning, I had the good fortune of serving at the soup kitchen for a couple of hours. Okay. And, you know, that is eye opening when you see the diversity there mm -hmm. and you see people for who they are and you see humanity instead of seeing color. Mm -hmm. um, I served to the black person, the white person, the person who looked like she belonged at a bank, mm -hmm. um, the person who had two children with her, you know, the person who looked like they, you know, had some mental health issues or seemed as if they did or drug issues. Mm. Once you, I find once you strip away all of that and you realize that we're all just at core doing the best we can mm -hmm. to survive and navigate this life we've been given. Uh -huh. And if we give each other a break, uh -huh. I think that is the ultimate solution. 
Wow. Okay. So you, 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 in your words, your words have, have, uh, are very packed full of insight and, and wisdom and experience. Uh, and so, uh, you talk about dialogue, you talk about service, um, and, um, the experience there, but, um, just from my experience and listening to you, um, that all of that is coming from someplace. There's, there's yeah. something that, that leads you to, to do that. I mean, uh, and, and that there's, there's a compassion involved there. There's kind of like a, a universal, uh, when you talk about recognizing the, the value in, in the other individual, there's kind of a universality there, uh, uh, an existential universality. Um, so I might even accuse that of being spirituality as well. Uh, and so, uh, I'm, 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 I'm surmising that that's coming from someplace. And so, uh, you have, uh, we have yet to talk about your own kind of spirituality or religious practice, but, uh, your parents come from very distinct, um, Christian, uh, backgrounds. And so mm -hmm. how does that influence your personal spirituality? And then how does your personal spirituality inform your compassion and your, and your, your, your interest to serve? Yeah. Well, you know, growing up, even though my parents came from um, defined backgrounds religiously, spiritually, and they try their best to implement that um, in their family, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it didn't always work. And so there were years that we didn't go to church. There were years that we weren't involved. And, and part of that had to do with uh, the skepticism, mm -hmm. the, the fear of, you know, do these people just want a token mixed family in their church? Okay. Um, because we did experience yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, early on I had to just kind of focus on, on good. And I tried to focus on understanding the things that were going on in my life, um, that it would be okay. And I didn't know what that would mean. Um, I remember getting my first Bible and reading it and being terrified because <laughs> it was like this rule book of stuff that I was supposed to be doing. And, and I didn't understand, I didn't have the guidance to see the grace and to understand the context. And, um, you know, over time that came, mm -hmm. but my spirituality and what our family believes is, is really based on questioning and understanding that God's not afraid of our questions of our doubts, of our, um, our anger. And there are plenty of things that I'm like, really? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so that's where it comes from. Um, and that's what we're trying to teach our daughter. And Craig and I come from, my husband and I come from different spiritual backgrounds as well. Okay. And there's had to have been some melding of them. But ultimately, you know, the golden rule and doing, you know, good and accepting good back um, is really my personal goal foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, very, some interesting uh, elements in, 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 in what you're sharing. Um, one of the things uh, that stands out for me is, is, um, uh you describing the the spiritual practice that you share with your husband um and and that you that you work to instill within your daughter um i'm unmarried uh and i'm without any kids uh i'm without any kids um so that's that's like new territory for me yeah. I, I have yet to uh, experience that i'm unable to talk about that with with some type of first hand experience so can can you a little um, elaborate a little bit further about how how you approach that experience of here here it is here here you are as as a young woman um, and with this experience in life these teachings in life um, you find uh, another man that you love um, who's coming from another ex another realm of experience uh, how do you approach that kind of shared spirituality uh, and then how do you build a home? Uh, with that, um, amidst still obviously still have differences perhaps, yes. uh, and, and everything else, but, but you have enough, uh, common foundation, common ground, um, to, to maintain 
that 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 togetherness and that home. Uh, mm-hmm. So, how do you approach that, and how do you sustain it? Yeah, you know, for a long time, my husband and I, we just had discussions and. Um, really there wasn't a whole lot, well, there was nothing that was off limits. You know, um, I came to the table with this idea of God as, um, you know, always looking for something for you to do wrong Mm. and for you to be punished. Um, even though I was looking for the good, I was also waiting for the bad. I was waiting for, you know, the slap down. uh oh, they're coming to get us. I hear them out there. The ambulance going to the hospital. I okay, okay. The, well, <laughs> but please, please don't do the sirens on me. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, really understanding where he was coming from um, and working through the process of my faith and, and asking the questions, we came to a place of mutual understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, and of knowing that we are we are not always going to agree, and we don't. Mm-hmm. Um, but ironing that out before we had a child sure. was really important for us. And with her, I want her to ask the questions. I want her to have the doubts. I want her to um, listen to what we tell her, and then question it and question it. Mm-hmm. Because that's the only way she's going to figure out what she believes, Mm -hmm. which, of course, I would hope would come back to what I have found to be true for my life. Right. But, um, you know, she's got to come up with those those um, foundations for herself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my husband is is a scientist. And so looking at spirituality from that perspective too can be challenging. Sure. Um, but at the same time, you know, it, it, it is the driving force that keeps us going. Um, and when we do have disagreement, we just disagree. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you mentioned some things like the golden rule, uh, mm-hmm. You mentioned uh, questioning, uh, which which I imagine is a, is a continuation of of your lineage of healthy skepticism. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, are there any other kind of? I asked the question before of what your parents teach you. Uh, so, if I were to ask you that question about what you're teaching your kid, your your daughter, mm-hmm. uh, are there are there any other kind of like uh, life lessons or principles? Um, that, that stand out that, that, that you try to impart on to your daughter? Yeah. Um, take a breath, calm down. It'll be okay. That's the first one. Okay. Um, the other thing is that there's nothing that you can't work out. You just have to put your mind to it. Um, there's no problem that's too big for God. There's no problem that um, doesn't have a solution. It may not be what you want, but um, it's definitely, it's what you need mm-hmm. more often than not. Okay. And, you know, to enjoy life as not a series of milestones, mm-hmm. but as your own personal journey, okay. you know, and if, if marriage is not the milestone that you, is meant for your life, that's fine. If children is not that's fine. If you, you know, decide that you're going to leave the United States and live in Kenya, that's fine. You don't have to take everyone else's path because they, they have that path. You, you are your own unique person. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would also encourage her and we do encourage her to think critically to not believe what everyone says just because they look like they're an authority. Mm -hmm. Um, to be respectful, mm-hmm. but to check it out on your own. Sure. And and be prepared to be wrong. And it's okay. It's okay to change your opinion. That's huge. Sure. So. Yeah. Uh, I think that's that's advice that, that can help a lot of young people uh, who are who may who may be otherwise without that type of guidance. Uh, so I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so continuing on to the fifth and final question. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, which is given, given your background, given, 
uh, the lessons that you're, you're taught and learn in life, the, the challenges that you experience, and some of the solutions that you find, mm -hmm. what is the message that you have to share with the universe? What with is the your, universe. What is your message? Yeah. Um, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be this difficult. It, it wasn't meant to be this difficult. Mm. Um, and ultimately, we are not meant to do this alone. Mm. None of this. You know, I need you. You need me. We need each other um, in varying degrees and at varying times. But to judge people, to discount people on something silly as if, you know, the... the the melanin in my skin or the book of prayer that I read from is robbing you of what the universe has for you. And what, what I believe is what God meant for us. Um, and so just chill out. <laughs> Simple, sweet, effective. Well, chill out. <laughs> thank you, Paulette. Hey, thank you.